let's get to the 13th Semiosis 101 episode on general piercing and semi-stock theory for illustrators and designers. This week, in around 10 minutes, we will focus on the middle level of semiotic representation in semiosis, indexical. The index in a piercing context is a fresh notion. It is semiotic representation that points to existing things, just like your index finger does. You will see when we discuss indexical representation, its piercing meaning creates a whole raft of new visual communication, denotative and connotative possibilities. It is important to begin today with an open mind. Remember, words in different social cultural contexts have different definitions. Okay, now Pierce wrote his pragmatic semiotic theory in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. To understand indexical representation in semiosis in order to know how to apply it into visual communication design, you must bracket out any other definitions for the next 10 minutes as we explore indexicality. So stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell, point your finger, let's go. Hi, welcome to this week's talk. Okay, so we're now moved up from iconicity and we're going to be looking at indexicality. Now, within semiosis, Peirce's semiotic theory, indexicality is the second level of representation of the concept that we need to visually communicate. So what we're seeing here is the index. Think of the index finger as a way of getting your head around indexicality because the finger points, and we're going to keep coming back to this throughout today's talk. What we're looking at here is the difference between an image of a panda and an existing panda. Forget about the photograph, look through the photograph. We'll talk about photographs in the context of semiotics um, in much later detail in future videos. But right now, it's not about the photograph, it's about the panda, the existent panda. So what we have is on the left-hand side, just marks, iconic marks that put in a particular uh, order and a particular composition, we get a sense of a resemblance to what's on the right hand side, a real life panda. Left hand side, it's iconic representation of the idea of these things together suggest a panda. Whereas in the photograph, and remember it's in the photograph, not the photograph, but in the photograph, we have an existent panda, an existent thing. So that thing exists. Now, obviously this is a, a full-bodied, full-blooded living creature, but it's just a, a picture, a photograph of that creature. But it could also be an existent idea. Okay, so the idea could be existence. It could be a thing, not even living. But if in your indexical representation, it is connecting that existential connection to something that does actually exist. So that's where we're going to go with this talk today on indexicality. So moving forward, indexical representation is the second subclass of a concept or representing a concept as a semiotic sign. And where it has a clear existential connection back to the original concept. So if you think about this, an index indexical representation does not assert anything other than a statement of there, the index finger, there. It exists. It's something that the target audience knows is actually existing somewhere in their experience. Okay? So what we have going for us here is the fact that the concept that we are tasked to visually communicate from our brief may connect to something that is in existence. And this is where the actual idea and the knowledge of semiosis will change how you design forever. Once you understand this and are more consciously aware of the existence and the existential connections so that you can craft them in much stronger ways. So let's move forward. So the index as a representation asserts nothing. It can only say 
there. And this is Peirce talking. And as Peirce says, the index, the indexical representation takes hold of our eyes, as it were, and forcibly directs them to a particular object or concept in design essential terms. And there, the indexical representation stops. Don't go any further. What do we mean by that? Well, let's move forward and explore that in a little bit more depth. So, the direct existential connection that points from the semiotic sign to the concept, which is in the brief that we need to communicate, is just like an index finger that it can point to something in the real world. So making that connection, that visual connection, or strengthening that visual connection that you might already be intending to, to design for or to illustrate for, is the moment where you will change your designing forever by being more mindful of how to strengthen that existential connection in what you design to your intended target audience. How do we do that? Well, we've looked last week at iconicity, and that's the lowest level, but it still features in this level of representation. So if you think about Russian dolls, you know, those wooden um, dolls that have another doll nested inside, and then you open up that wooden doll and there's another Russian doll inside that, and it keeps going down, 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 until you get to the smallest nth degree of a Russian doll. That's how iconicness, iconicity operates within a sign. The iconicness grabs our attention, but it's only when the audience starts to interpret what we have crafted in our visual communication, in the visual language that we choose within our designs and illustration, that we can actually start to have a lot more um, power over how effective our visual communication is. So the iconic representations are nested within the higher signs as we go through. Next week, we're going to talk about symbolic, but it's in the highest one. So if you think about them as assemblages, okay? So these are assemblages of iconicness that leads the target audience to a point where they can start interpreting more information from the iconicness. And that's where indexicality comes in. So what we have here is a poster from 1978, 1979 from Iran. And if you know your history, then you'll know around about that period of time. There was um, Iranian revolution where the Shah was overthrown and a new regime was put into place. So we can start to interpret what we're seeing here within the actual poster designs because we can see shapes within here, figure and ground again, gestalt, figure and ground. We can see shapes. We can't read the Arabic unless you can read Arabic. But we're seeing here that we can see a protest figure. Now, it could be somebody with a hood on, but an arm up in protest. And we've got black and white, so it's drawn our attention to the redness. So the red obviously has got some sort of symbolic, uh, sorry, it's got some sort of semiotic um, meaning to that. But let's put the colour red to one side for now and concentrate on the, the arm going up. Because it also could be interp interpreted on an iconic level as similar or a resemblance to a gun barrel. So here we get a people's uh, protest, which could also be an armed struggle, just from a few iconic shapes and figure and ground, we get this bigger idea. It's only if you make the connection through knowing the history that there was a revolution in 78, 79 in Iran, that we have this focus that this poster indexically is pointing to a moments in history where there was a revolution. So on that note, let's move forward to the next one. In this one, um, we have a, a famous poster by Shigeo Fukuda. The previous uh, image was Morteza Mamayas. Hopefully I pronounced that right. But in this one, uh, Shigeo's poster, we again get the gestalt figuring ground, the black and the white. And it's only when you start to analyze what we're seeing that you can start to see legs. But 
indexically we can start to interpret those legs much more because we can start to put gender to those legs that the white legs are feminine and the um, black legs are essentially masculine well obviously women can wear trousers as well but in this case we've got one form and out of the other so it's the optical illusion of being able to see two things at once but also only being able to focus in on one thing so what we have here is iconically it's making us see legs it's making us see then shoes and trousers but it's just iconic lines but indexically we can go one step further than that and indexically, we can actually start to, to interpret that as more than just legs. Indexically, it's pointing us to these are legs, but we've got multiple legs. We have a visual rhythm across the poster, which suggests it could be dance. So indexically, it's moving us up to the next, uh, another interpretation at the indexical level that what we're seeing here is dancing. Okay. You could also interpret that from just the iconic shapes, that this could be anything between the 1920s to the 1930s, even 40s. You know, you might have a completely different interpretation of the period of time this could relate to, but that's my interpretation of this from my um, experiences and my knowledge. I'm projecting that onto this poster. So it's not just about legs. Indexically, we got to the point where it's legs. The resemblance suggests legs. Indexically, we are now saying these are legs, a male, female legs. But then we can indexically have another go at this and say dance. So this is the power of what you have. By understanding this level of semiotic communication representation, which is at the indexical level of pointing to existing things, ideas and things that exist in the real world, that we get a sense of being able to change how we design or illustrate forever because we are now understanding that what we see is something that is more than just the iconic mark making. The right audience with the right information that we craft into our visual communication can then suggest bigger and more complex ideas and even existing things. So let's just move forward to the take home from this last week we said about having a take home within our um, videos because the first 11 videos are just setting the scene and now we're here to actually think about how to enhance your visual communication so my suggestion to you is now during your development when trying to connect with your target audience consider as you visually represent how can you reinforce the audience's understanding what they are looking at to the concept you need to visually communicate. So think about that as you read the brief and how you can come up with the ideas to actually you know, perform like what you've been paid for or what you need to do. So it's not just about the actual technical part of your design or illustrating, but it's also the aesthetic and the visual language you use. So how can you craft your visual communication to take hold of your audience's eyes and ensure your aesthetic visual language points them to the thing you are tasked to and you need to have your audience understand okay so that's where we'll leave today and next week we'll move up one more level and we'll look at symbolic representation but that's it for this week thanks for watching and check in next week So that is our 10 minutes of piercing semiosis 101 for this week. We now see that when we discuss indexical representation in pragmatic semiotics, we are talking about how to craft our visual language to point to existing things. The semiotic power of the index in visual communication is that your audience's interpretation can be connotatively aligned with existing things, whether this is an actual place or object or an idea. Remember, we have index fingers we use our index fingers to point at things so think of indexical representation in visual communication as a semiotic way of connecting the audience with an existent thing that reinforces the intended message and connects to the concept we are tasked to design for Peirce says that the index only says there 
It takes hold of our eyes, as it were, and forcibly directs them to a particular concept, and there it stops. The indexical level of representation of the concept has a more dynamic semiotic relationship with the concept than iconic, but it says nothing more to the audience. Semiotically, indexical level of representation has a clearer connection to the concept it is representing. This is more of an existential connection, which brings us to a philosophical, phenomenological level of understanding of visual communication design's power to communicate. Our focus next week will build on iconic and indexical representation levels and end with the highest level, symbolic. There'll be another video next week, so come back Hi, if you've watched these videos before, you probably know by now, I'm Dave Wood, a design educator and researcher, a published design author, and I've worked commercially as both a freelance illustrator and graphic designer. The guy behind the theory, Charles Sanders Peirce, was a philosopher, a mathematician, and a theorist, but he wasn't a creative. Each week on this Scout Scott Semiosis 101 YouTube channel, I'll post at least one 10 minute explainer video on an aspect of Pierce's pragmatic semiotic theory. Each free Semiosis 101 10 minute video will use designer centric terms instead of theoretical language so that illustrators and graphic designers can understand and follow. Each video will feature a take-home piece of applicable semiotic theory and they do interconnect to build up your understanding of semiosis. But this channel is not a course in semiotics per se. Instead, each video is a, a bite-sized illustrated piece of new knowledge on sign action or semiosis as Peirce names it. The aim of these three videos is to take Peirce's quite complex philosophical theoretical language and put it in the context of designing visual communication, whether these are illustrations, motion, branding, packaging, editorial, etc. By subscribing to this Scout Scott Semiosis 101 YouTube channel, you will learn how Pierce's pragmatic semiotic theory of semiosis can help to enhance and improve how you visually communicate. I have many more Pearsian semiotic topics to discuss, but I'd be interested in hearing about your semiotic ideas. Add a comment below. If you like this video, check out my other semiotic videos and consider liking and sharing those videos with others. The more we creators discuss semiotic theory, the easier its application into our creative processes will be. As a fellow creator and a published design author, I have a link in the description to my Scout Scott website where you can find all the Semiosis 101 videos and read background info on the blog. You can download free Semiosis 101 video transcripts and reading lists. You can buy illustrated and typographical gift ranges on my Red Bubble shop. You can also buy my 2014 design book published by Bloomsbury Publishing, Interface Design and Introduction to Visual Communication in UI Design. Over the years, I've collaborated with other design academic researchers and Persian semioticians to develop a designer-centric explanation of Pierce's theoretical language. If you are interested in reading my semiotic Rosetta Stone academic writing, then you can visit my academia.edu link in the description. Any other books on Pierce's semiotics or design I've mentioned in the videos are also listed in the description. Check them out too. Thanks for watching. Check out the other videos, like and share them with your friends and hit the bell and subscribe buttons to be notified when next week's video is published. You can also follow Semiosis 101 on the socials for updates. It's Scouse underscore Scott on Instagram and Semiosis 101 on Twitter. See you all again next week for more Semiosis 101 to help illustrators and designers to enhance your visual communication skills.